Welcome back to my channel guys. It has been a minute, but today we are talking about something pretty important. We're going to talk about Roe v. Wade and what does it mean? Where did it come from? There are so many questions that I think a lot of people don't really understand. And so I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into, you know, where it, when did this case come about? What is Roe v. Wade? What is Dobbs? This name we're hearing too. How was Roe v. Wade overturned 50 years later? So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Roe v. Wade, actually, hold on, let me back up. I want you guys to know something. Overturning Roe v. Wade does not mean that there is a federal abortion ban. Abortions are not banned at a federal level, okay? There are certain states that are now enacting bans against abortion, but by no means is there a federal blanket ban on abortions. So let's get into it. In 1973, a woman by the name of Norma, and actually her last name wasn't even Roe, they gave her a fictitious last name for identity purposes, protection purposes, and she sued along with a doctor in Texas and a couple that was actually trying to have a baby but wasn't yet pregnant. She sued the Texas district attorney saying that this abortion ban in Texas was unconstitutional. Now, Norma was pregnant at the time that she initially filed this lawsuit. Um, and she was essentially saying, you know, this, this ban on abortions being that it only allows for abortions in the case of a medical emergency when the woman's life is in jeopardy, that it's unconstitutional and she has a constitutional right to abortion. Also, let me just state that the doctor and the couple were actually dropped from the suit. So the suit only dealt with Norma. Um, hence why it's called Roe v. Wade. Wade was the name of the Texas district attorney. So the district court ruled against her, the appellate court ruled against her, and the Supreme Court granted certiorari to hear the case, which meant that just literally that they were gonna hear the case for simplicity purposes. So the case went to the Supreme Court and the court was argued on a basis of right to privacy. Why did they argue this on right to privacy, on a right to privacy basis instead of an equal protection basis? Well, that's because a case by the name of Griswold had just recently been decided. And Griswold was about a married couple's right to obtain contraceptives. And Griswold was argued on a right to privacy basis. So Roe's attorneys thought that that was the best avenue for her to take. The Supreme Court found that she in fact did have a constitutional right to abortion and women do have a constitutional right to abortion under the due process clause of the 14th amendment. Now the court mentioned that although this right doesn't exist explicitly in the constitution, it is implied through the language of the 14th amendment. So certain implied rights are granted in the constitution, this being one of them, but it's not explicitly, the right to abortion is not explicitly set forth in the constitution. That is important to know. So while ruling that women had a constitutional right to abortion, they also stated that 24 weeks was that period of fetal viability. And they also set forth trimester kind of like uh, a times table, so to speak. So they set forth when, what states can regulate during the first trimester, what states can regulate during the second trimester, what they can regulate during the third trimester, so on and so forth. So as of 1973, Roe established that women had a constitutional right to abortion. Although implicit, it was a right nonetheless. Now, how did we end up here today in May, June, not May, June, of 2022. So this is how. In 2018, Mississippi enacted a law called the Mississippi Gestational Age Act. And essentially what that said was that abortions were banned after 15 weeks. Now obviously this 15 week period is in direct contradiction to the 24 week viability mark set forth in Roe. So Mississippi's act was challenged as unconstitutional. Made its way up to the Supreme Court and there is where we have Dobbs. So that challenge of Mississippi's Gestational Age Act, that case was called Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. In Dobbs, the question before the court was, are all pre-viability abortion bans unconstitutional? And that was the question the Supreme Court had to answer. In answering that question, they decided that women actually don't have an implicit right to abortion under the 14th Amendment, that the 14th Amendment does not anywhere implicitly or explicitly 
grant a right to abortion. And that is why Roe v. Wade was overturned. So some people think to themselves, how is Roe v. Wade being heard You know, 50 years later? It was not heard again. It was the fact that Dobbs, in ruling that Mississippi's ban was not unconstitutional, found that the Supreme Court in Roe misapplied the 14th Amendment and women actually don't have a constitutional right to abortion. Keep in mind that the Supreme Court made note of the fact that the Dobbs case wasn't whether women should have a constitutional right to abortion, it's whether women do have a constitutional right to abortion. And they found that under the language of the Constitution, there is no right to abortion. So in overturning Roe v. Wade, they didn't create a federal outright ban on abortion. That's not what that means. It's not like, oh, women you know, don't have the right to abortion anymore, so now all abortions are banned. That's not it. It's that it goes back to the states because the Supreme Court decides issues of constitutionality. And if the right to abortion is not in the Constitution as per their interpretation of it, then rightfully it goes to the states. Now, whether or not that was the right decision, I'm not here to discuss that. All I can speak to is that if the right to abortion, according to the Supreme Court, is not in the Constitution, that is a matter for the states to handle. Now, had a woman's right to abortion been different if it were argued under equal protection, that's another issue. The court in Dobbs kind of addressed the equal protection issue. They said it to two cases and they said that that argument as far as a woman's right to abortion under the equal protection clause is foreclosed by this court based on these two prior precedents. But those prior precedents didn't really speak to this exact issue. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was a prior Supreme Court justice, actually stated in the past that had Roe v. Wade initially been argued as an equal protection issue, it's likely that, that it would have stood the test of time, so to speak. Ruth Bader Ginsburg also said about the Roe v. Wade opinion that the Supreme Court should have never ruled completely that a ban on abortion was unconstitutional. Instead, they should have created a narrower holding and said that Texas's ban on abortion was unconstitutional, but then kind of left it open to handle on a case-by-case -case basis because what she says is that creating this blanket ban on abortion restrictions actually worked against the pro-choice movement because up until this point, all of the cases had been trending towards a, um, you know, towards obtaining that right to abortion, whereas once that holding was put in place in Roe, and they essentially said women have the right to abortion, after that, all the cases were in an attempt to restrict the right on abortion even more. So she was actually kind of trying to explain that in creating this blanket ban in Roe, it actually worked as a disadvantage, so to speak, to the pro-choice movement. So what can we expect going forward? Well, we know that certain states are implementing outright bans. And when I say outright bans, what I mean is that there are no abortions allowed unless the woman's life is in jeopardy or there is a medical emergency. The states that come to mind that have these bans that I know for sure are Missouri and Texas. I know there are more than that. I just don't feel comfortable relaying them here in this video because I don't know them by heart. There are some states that are partially regulating abortion. So Florida, for instance, tried to implement a 15 week ban, meaning abortions can't take place unless there's a medical emergency after 15 weeks, but that was just blocked by a state judge. So we're still on that 24 week law, which we've had since before this Dobbs case even happened, which states that abortions can't happen unless there's a medical emergency after 24 weeks. So each state is gonna implement their own ban. Some states aren't gonna ban abortions at all, um, but essentially what this ruling did is give the power back to the states. I know there's a ton of questions on substantive due process because Justice Clarence Thomas's opinion stated that all cases that have relied on substantive due process, such as the right to gay marriage, the right to obtain contraceptives, he says those need to be reevaluated. That is a whole video in and of itself, but let me just say this to kind of put your mind at ease. What he was saying in that dissenting opinion was that he doesn't believe in the concept of substantive due process. Substantive due process was a concept made up by the courts over the years in interpreting the constitution and the due process clause and he doesn't believe in that concept as a whole and because of that he thinks that every case that was 
decided upon in relying on substantive due process needs to be reevaluated under a different clause, such as the Privileges and Immunities Clause or the Equal Protection Clause. He's not saying he doesn't believe in the right to obtain contraceptives or he doesn't believe in the right to same sex marriage. He's just saying it needs to be reevaluated under a concept or a clause in the Constitution that actually has some standing in his opinion. So that's what I'll say on that. I will do a whole separate video on substantive due process if that's what you guys want to hear. But I hope this gives you some explanation as to what Roe v. Wade is, how it came about, what Dobbs is, how they're intertwined. I know it can be very confusing, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I am more than happy to answer them. As always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you on my next video.